Hello, my name's uh, Nick Beach, and today, as part of strategic planning, we're going to have a look at alignment. The critical thing w with strategic planning is being able to understand what a actually releases your capability. So it's one thing knowing what you're good at, but knowing how to use that so you're very good at it. So strategic alignment, in many ways, is getting everything aligned so it works together. But let's move on. Let's just have a look at the objectives. What we're going to do today, look at what is meant by strategic alignment. So by the end of this, you'll understand what that is. What is meant by strategic intent? And look at a few different ways and approaches to strategic thinking. So devising your strategy may change depending on where, where you are, and it may also change on the way you think. So the very way you think will deal with how the organisation approaches its market and, its and user, uses its capability. What is strategic alignment? Well, as part of a strategic planning process, you can use a st strategic alignment to ensure that personal products, processes, etc., all work together, they work in harmony, they support each other and they don't conflict. In other words, one element isn't pulling away from another. Using this analysis, basically you can get a better planning system. I would like to emphasise one particular issue. It's not just getting them to work together, but it is as important to stop them working against each other. Often in organisations, particularly strewn across the world, departments and areas can actually start being competing with it, going into a state of competing with each other. And strategic alignment reduces this conflict within the organisation so that the organisation can clearly move forward with all its assets pointing in the right direction. Strategic alignment can be used or is used as part of the internal audit uh, process. And basically, this, the, this, a simple way of doing it is having a scoring system whereby you value each element of the organisation and see how it matches with the others and how they can actually be uh, worked together. It can also be used to measure how effective the strategic plan has been. In other words, this is what we thought we were going to do. Did it work to as it should have, uh, should, should have done? What were the areas that needed to be improved? How are we going to improve them? Are they in a line and can they cooperate with each other? Key areas to look into it. Personnel. Are the personnel capable of communicating with each other? Are they good at the skills that they've got? Do the departments work in conjunction with each other? The products, are we producing it appropriately? What are the pr processes that facilitate the, um, the products being produced? And do the systems enable the processes to allow the people to work on the products? So effectively, we've got this harmonised system whereby everything works together rather than against each other. And that in a nutshell, is strategic alignment. That now brings me to strategic intent. Strategic intent, as, it may, as the word suggests, gives you an intent of what the organisation is going to do. It sets the vision, where we are going to be in the next two, three, four, five, whatever years, and how, and from that, you can then devise how you're going to get there. The trick with this vision thing is that people actually share it. My experience of working with boards is often the managing director and the chairman will have the vision thing clearly in their mind so they know where they intend to take the organisation, but whether that's fully supported by all the directors may not necessarily be the same thing. The, the critical issue there is that the chairman and the managing director haven't communicated, even at board level, where the organisation is going. And that has is quite a sad situation to be in. If you then impound that or impact that, how that spreads through the organisation, the senior management team have got to be aware of uh, where the, the strategic intent is driving them to, the middle management and the workforce have all got to have some idea of where the, the organisation is wanting to take them to. Therefore, often a good strategic intent focus is something clear, sharp and can be crystallised in a relatively few set of words. So we know exactly where we're going, and it is in a language that everybody can understand. In other words, what it's achieved is, is devising, this is where we are now, but this is where we're going to be in the future. And that to get there, we have to do this, this and this. But you've got to buy everybody into it. Everybody's got to say, I'm going to do this, and I want to achieve it. 
in a meaningful way. If you can see here from the pyramid, you can see that the strategic intent then tells you where you're going to go. From that, your vision and mission then says to achieve that strategic intent, we have to build this vision. To achieve that vision, we have to build this to be a supporting mission. That will then cascade down into aims and objectives and also set your strategic priorities. In other words, you then have a plan starting to throw out that will actually enable you to achieve your strategic intent, the top of the organisation's aim. From that, then, you can devise your strategies and start to move the organisation forward to achieve it. Strategic thinking. A number of approaches to strategic thinking. Um, so it's not just one way of doing things. Um, you, there is not a wrong and a right way. It can be a combination of, of ways of thinking and ways of looking at things. can also have a dominant style, but it's important if you have a dominant style of thinking that you are aware of what it is and how it approaches risk in relation to other forms of thinking. Often in a boardroom scenario, it's good to have a balance of individuals who will both voice their opinion and look at things from a different way. Often you see that, that non-executive directors are brought into a boardroom just to give a bigger picture. So when the, the managing director and the, the executive director is enthusiastic to, to maybe take a market, the non-executive directors who may have been brought in with a lot more experience of PLCs, etc., may say, well, have you thought about this? And have you looked at it in that way? And perhaps your thinking is a little bit more, um, less risk-averse than it should be. Perhaps you should be looking at things in a slightly different way. Now, it can be that you will take one approach for one market because that's the boardrooms that you are employing and the companies that you are employing into one market. And you may have a different set of companies or uh, divisions operating in another market. And their, their management style and their thinking style can often be very different. So you can have a situation where the organisation may have a big strategic decision-making process, and within that they have a certain style of thinking, but they allow their lower boards within subsidiary companies to operate in a different way, and that can be work. The issue is that we are aware that this may well have a multitude of different ways of approaching decision-making. The trick of it is is that it is orientated to the market and all the elements work towards what the customer wants. Okay, strategic thinking. Today what I just want to look at is four models of strategic thinking. The models, as you can see in the diagram, uh, really are intersected by a, a dotted line. And the ones with the internal thinking is really step by step process can contain within the organisation. The other side, the external thinking, is much more market-led. So it's more reactive, but proactively reactive in the market. Let's just do them in, a t in turn. Linear thinking really um, is a process of a line, in a line. So everything in the ideal world would go in a systematic process. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. And to an extent, linear thinking doesn't necessarily take into cons great consideration potential changes. So it makes an assumption that, in its purest form, that everything's going to go right as it can do. Now, there are weaknesses in that thinking, in that change can occur, and we may have to adapt it. If it is that case, then it moves towards more incremental thinking. Incremental thinking basically takes the notion that, yes, we're going to have a plan, but we're going to do it in nice, neat little stages, and we may have to adapt it as we go along a little bit. So... Strictly planning, very systematic, and makes a, world, a series of assumptions about the world around it. A much more focused, steady approach. Thinking has moved on to a certain extent, particularly SME level, to the external thinking models. There is the suggestion of ex a, um, emergent strategy. An emergent strategy basically says, this is the rough area that we're going to go into. But we're not going to say exactly how we're going to go there. And we're not necessarily going to say that's exactly where we want to be. What we can see is we know we want to be in that general area and we will develop our resources and take opportunities as we, we move on. So the direction is fairly focused, but there may be movements off as opportunities enable it to, to change. The final version is what's called freewheeling opportunism. 
Freewheeling opportunism is really take any opportunity that may well present itself to you. So what you have there is uh, the opportunity it raises its head, you go for it. Uh, and it may be that you can extend yourself potentially into areas that you've never been in before, but you can accept that maybe you have to be able to get out pretty damn quick. So with regards to um, freewheeling opportunism, is you've got to be aware that there is, a, there is a certain degree more risk in these environments. However, it does, can give a considerable amount of profit to an organisation and give them a, a lot of competitive advantage. A lot of scenarios of first mover advantage can be initiated through free, freewheeling opportunism. In summary, strategic thinking provides you with a focus uh, of effort. So you've got this ability to see the big picture. From that, you can generate um, your strategic intent. You can see that the, the intent of the organisation is going to go in this direction, so everybody can share that, that, that view from which you can build your vision, your mission, and then your subsequent strategies, so the organisation is aligned and can work together. It provides the seeds for success. In many ways, good strategy is organising your luck. Bringing things together can help you focus forward and give everybody a clear image of where you're going. So having some intent in the organisation, some driving force, some focus, can help invigorate the organisation and help it to work together. It can get, get, generate insights into the capabilities within the organisation and the market environment where you're going. So people get a clear picture of what they're going to do and what they're expected to do. It can be also be used through a good strategic alignment um, the effective use of resources and how those resources can be used to synergize with, within the organization. And finally, it can help you um, to put the, the, the seeds in for uh, pro proactive success and focus your managerial team so they optimize their people, engage with their people and achieve more with less. Thank you very much indeed.